Hello ladies, hello gents. My name is Mira Skinner and today we are going to be talking about marriage. What to know before making that big step. Marriage is a sacrament. It is a commitment. It is a covenant between two people who are willing and ready to share their lives together, to share their highs, their lows, their passions and the dreams together and to live the everyday life. Deciding who you marry is going to affect your life tremendously. Deciding who you chose as a spouse, who you choose as the other parent for your children is the biggest decision you will make in your life. So you have to understand what you're getting yourself into before getting married because it is a commitment that does not depend and cannot fit solely on love. Apart from the romance, apart from the loving and all the talking and all the butterflies, you have to add an insightful, informed mind before making that decision. You cannot, you cannot force someone to get married to you. You cannot ask somebody to prove their love to you by marrying you because marriage needs you to be emotionally stable, to be emotionally, to be mentally ready, to be emotionally ready. It is not only about the man or the woman. It is marriage is for two people. So we cannot put this only on the man or put this only on the woman. It is something that one needs to be mentally and emotionally or even financially ready to get into before you can get into marriage. So asking someone to prove their love for you by marrying you, it's only going to make that marriage doom from the beginning. Because when someone is being pressured, when somebody is being rushed into marriage, they are going into that marriage without the commitment. They are going into that marriage without being mentally ready. So it, it leads to a whole lot of issues. That is why you see many homes are breaking today because they did not take the time to understand what marriage is before getting into marriage. They, did not, they were not ready for it. So they went into it blindly. They went into it by being pressured or maybe just because they feel like they love each other and they decided to go ahead and get married. And that is not the way to go about it. You have to ask yourself that is this person, do you understand this person? Do you, have you seen them at the highs and lows? Have you seen them when they're angry? What is their mindset? What, what are their thoughts? How's their attitude before you even think about getting married to them? Yes, you might love them. Yes, you might, um, want to be with them but then you have to go through all this to be able to understand if they are the right person for you if they are the right fit for you does this person the number one thing that you ask yourself about this person does this person have your back like can they go through hell and high water to be able to be there for you can they be there for you when you need it the most can they show you that they love you can they show you that they want to be with you they want to spend the rest of their life with you because if someone cannot go through hell and high water for you then there is no reason why you want to be married to them because there will come a time where you need them to have your back there will come a time that maybe you need them to to be with you maybe against the in-laws or maybe against the world because it is the two of you against the world or the two of you with the world however you want to put it but does this person have your back can they go through anything with you? So you have to ask yourself that if the answer for you is a yes, then that is a, some, that's somebody that you can consider being with. Number two, you have to ask yourself this question. Is there what they are born? Because marriage is based on trust. And if you cannot trust what somebody says, then that is a red flag. Because people just say things nowadays, they promise people stuff and they don't go follow through with it. Is this person that you're willing to get married to, do they follow through on what they say they will do? Can they still do that thing that they said they would do they would do even after all the feelings that made them make that decision even after all what was going on with their mood at that time has passed are they still able to follow through on what they said they would do because it requires trust if somebody says that they will do something and at the end of the day they cannot follow through that brings disappointment to the other person and disappointment leads to other things in marriage that they are not fruitful so does this person, is their word their bond? You have to understand if their word is their bond. Number three, you have to know if this person is abusive. Yes, abusive, because right now many people think that abuse is only about physical, like maybe hitting somebody or the physical abuse. There is more to abuse than only the physical aspect. It can be verbal. Verbal is the worst form of abuse because your tongue is a double-edged sword. The tongue can heal and the tongue can curse. There are so many people today in our world where, um, let me take for example, when they were growing up as kids, they were being verbally abused by their parents, by their um, siblings, by their friends, by even their teachers. So all those things that people said to them while they were growing up has sunk deep into their subconscious in such a way they act upon it. They don't even know that that is the reason why they are acting the way they are as an adult 
but it's because of all those things that have been said to them. So as they are growing up, they believe that they are not enough. As they are growing up, they believe that nobody can truly be there for them. They believe that they are not worth anything. So the, they go ahead and do all those things that they're doing because of the way they grew up. So now you come and then you meet somebody else that you plan to get married to. It is like meeting somebody that you want to get married to and, the, and they're verbally abusive. When this person keeps verbally abusing you, keeps uh, bringing you low, bringing down your morale, at the end of the day, you don't even believe in yourself anymore. At the end of the day, you don't, you don't do the things that you like to do with your life because you don't think that you are enough. And when somebody continues showing you that, then there is no reason, no matter how much you love them, no matter how much you care for them, there is no reason for you to be married to them because that is that already showing you. Sometimes people think um, marriage is just break like that. No, the signs were already there before you got into that relationship, this, before you got into that marriage. The signs were already there. We chose, chose to ignore them. And when you ignore things like this, then they are going to become even physical or even more abusive when they get into the relationship because they already they've already taken you at that standard they know you can you you you're okay with them verbally abusing you so you might be okay with them physically abusing you so these are the things that you need to take into consideration before you're making that big step because when all is said and done on that wedding day everybody's there happy everyone is dancing and drinking and they're having fun that marriage begins in the home it doesn't begin on that wedding day because the wedding is all bliss but when you get home, how do you react? When you get home, how do you handle your home? Are you able to keep your home together? Keeping a home is not only about the woman being a best, a, a virtuous wife or the, the, the man. It's about both of you. Are you both able to keep that home together? Are, are, are you able to make it work? Number four, you have to ask yourself, does this person want kids? Yeah, because it is okay for someone not to want kids. Some people today they don't want they don't want to have to deal with kids they love kids yet but they don't want to have one of their own so you have to know if you want kids and your spouse does not have one kids that is a red flag for you because down the line no matter how much you love this person you will want to have kids and they don't want to have kids they already told you they don't want to have kids so you have to know if this person want to have kids and if you guys have decided together that you want kids you have to also know if these children will be raised in a particular church or the parents or you the mom will take the child to another church one time and the dad will take the child to another church and maybe the and that will make the children confused so you want to know if you guys are able to have the same christian values in the same christian church so you have to ask yourself are you ready to do all these things because these are the sacrifices you make in marriages sometimes the person is your husband is catholic and the wife is praised so you guys have to come to a compromise to see where you guys are going to raise your children so that is an important step for you to take before getting into marriage. And if you have decided that you want to have kids, if you decided that kids is something that you want to have down the line, if you're being blessed with, then you have to go ahead and do the genotype compatibility test because you have to know if you're compatible. Maybe this person is AA and you're SS and that is a high risk because it is possible for you guys to have sickle cell children down the line. And trust me, having kids that are sick can be very strenuous to a marriage especially if it is something that could be avoided before the marriage it is very strenuous and it could even lead to divorce many people struggle because it drains your emotions it drains you financially emotionally mentally because you have a sick child that you have to constantly take care of and you keep you there'll come a time where you keep asking yourself what if what if what if you know so these are the things that you really want to take into consideration these are the things that you want to pay attention to look at that is why courtship is important. That is why communication is important. Because when you talk about these things, then it helps you guys down the line. It is like laying a foundation for the marriage. Number five, you have to go for counseling. Most African homes, most Africans, we believe, we do not believe in counseling. We were not raised to know that we have to go for pre-marital counseling before getting married. But it is very important because even the Bible says that my people fall because they do not have knowledge. But then, wise counsel can prevent you from many, many mistakes. Why can't, why the, the value of wise counsel is safety. So there is safety in wise counsel. You have to go before someone that is licensed, someone that is that know what they are doing, to be able to talk to them, to have this premarital counseling. And during this course of your premarital counseling, it might be one month, two, three, four, five, six months. During this period of time, you'll be able to know things about 
your spouse, the person that you wanted to get married to that you did not know before, and even themselves, they'll be able to um, uncover part of themselves that they did not know about. So it is really, really important to have premarital counseling before getting married. So these are the things that you have to know before you take that big step, because it's a huge step. It's going to affect your life one way or the other. So it is something that you don't want to rush into it. It is not something that you want to rush someone into it as well, because it is rather you have you, it's rather you stay single than having a bad marriage because having a bad marriage has a lot of effect on you your society your community your kids so do all these things before you get married thank you for watching today's video i hope you love this video like share comment this might help someone out there who is planning to get married and walk down the aisle thank you guys have a blessed week Mwah.